Hello Booktube! <laughs> and welcome back to your Daily Penguin. This is our Waddle Through My Penguin Classic wall. Uh, and I am doing now a whole row of Penguin Classic Deluxe Editions. So not the typical black spine trade paperbacks that you see mostly behind me, but rather full color, beautiful production numbers with French flaps and, and deckled edges and all sorts of a new assemblage of material, usually new artwork on the cover, or new cover design. Uh, and the Penguin Classic Deluxe Editions, most of mine, are not organized in any way. Baby, you want to come back over here? There you go. Uh, they just, I sort of put all the Penguin Classic Deluxe Editions together because for that first part of the Penguin Wall, I organized things, but for everything else I did not. <laughs> so, we don't, you don't know what you're going to be getting from day to day. That's okay, I've heard from quite a few of you that you actually like that. Um, and today is a 20th century author, you're going to know this author quite well. And it, uh, I have two Penguin volumes by this author. I don't think I have anything else. I don't think I have anything by this author that isn't a Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition. And I believe I only have these because they came to me uh, in the mail. Uh, and they show, in inadvertently show, a little evolution on the part of the Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition, or at least variation on the kind. The author is Graham Greene. Uh, and I have from him in the Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition The Quiet American, uh, which has a little author blurb on the back, it has blurbs on the inside cover, it has a plot description, uh, it has the, the French flaps, and it has the deckled edges, uh, and it has an introduction, a reprint of an essay by Robert Stone, the novelist Robert Stone. So all in all, a worthy production. Uh, and slightly bigger than the other uh, volume that I have. I took both of these down rather than do separate videos of them, <laughs> because that got a little tiresome with James Joyce. Uh, and this is The Power and the Glory. Also a Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition, although as you can see, uh, much smaller. This, the, the other one exceeds it in all directions. <laughs> uh, and also much more ornate. This does not have deckled edges, uh, but it does have the French flaps, and the French flaps come over a dust jacket. See, you've got an ordinary black spine penguin underneath there. But the Deluxe Edition has this, this uh, dust jacket. Actually, now that I look at this, I wonder if this is even, even is a deluxe edition. I wonder if this is just an ordinary penguin that they just made with a dust jacket. Once upon a time, penguins came with dust jackets. The mass markets did. Uh, maybe this isn't a deluxe edition. Maybe this is. I just put this with the other one because I don't have any other Graham Greene. I don't think I have any other Graham Greene, period, anywhere, by anybody, by any publisher. Uh, because uh, I'm not a huge fan of this writer. He seems distinctly middling to me. His books are... are wanly enjoyable. You can work your way through one on a warm summer afternoon and there will be scenes and maybe a couple of moments that will stick out for you, but not anything that not anything that justifies uh, the, the grappling with this author that posterity has done. I... Uh, the the uh, the, Graham, the the Penguin Classic Deluxe Edition, or maybe not, maybe it's just the Penguin Classic of The Power and the Glory, has an essay uh, by John Updike that precedes this volume by a long time. This is, John Updike wrote the essay 20 years before this this edition came out, and this edition is uh, very nice. Uh, except you know, when you've got a cover like this, you're just asking for it to rip. I'm amazed that mine hasn't ripped in the five years since this came out. Uh, but Green <clears throat> uh, famously split his own characterization of his works, of his, his entire shelf full of novels. A lot of nonfiction, too. A lot of really good nonfiction. But he, sh he split his shelf of novels between uh, Catholic novels, like The Power and the Glory, and uh, thrillers, what he called entertainments. And I don't like that, of course, because that is a, another attempt, a very early attempt in 20th century literature, for, on the writer's part, to critic-proof his work, or part of his work. To say, well, I took this kind of book more seriously than I took that kind of book, and the implication is, so should you. When, no, you're, you're still Graham Greene, and you've, you've been nominated for, you know, literary awards, you've won literary awards, you're mentioned routinely, some of your books are mentioned, whenever anybody generates a list of the best novels of the 20th century. So you don't get to say some of these books are off limits and some aren't. Some are, aren't, I didn't mean to be that good and others didn't, especially since I've never noticed that it makes a big difference. This author has a, a distinct problem with uh, 
not concision, because he can do a lot in very little grounds. Uh, concentration. He has a distinct power with concentration. Where you, you read books of his, like The End of the Affair, or The Power and the Glory, or, or The Quiet American. The Quiet American is a little bit better along the lines that I'm talking about than any of the others. But you read some of these books and you think, okay, this, there are large, many parts of this book that oddly wander. And uh, why is that? They, they, uh, they, they oddly seem undisciplined. I think of this author always in tandem with uh, John le Carré, who is never that way. You never get the impression in any of his books that there's any wandering going on. That that he's that he's sort of distracted. That his mind is wandering. You get that impression in Graham Greene novels all the time. Even the big serious ones. You get that impression so often. Some of them, the very minor books, no. But the very minor books, I don't get that impression because I get a, a complimentary but not necessarily good impression, which is that they were dashed off in an hour. It's tough to lose your concentration and wander off if you're writing a book in an afternoon. Uh, but I have my theories as to this. I, of course, read, uh, there's a three-volume biography of Graham Greene by a guy named Sherry that is fantastic. I strongly recommend it. It is a feat of modern biographical writing. And I read those volumes, and I reread them. I read them as they were coming out, and then I reread them because I found a whole, the whole three of them uh, for a dollar a piece at the Brattle Bookshop here in Boston years and years ago. I reread the whole thing thought, okay, this is a monument to uh, literary biography. Why don't you reread the whole thing? And I did, and I paid careful attention. I paid careful attention. I do not think that that biographer, or I've read two other biographies of, uh, of Graham Greene, None of them really hammered on the point that is the very first thing I think when I read these books and encounter that kind of flaccid wandering in mid-event. Like, for instance, the events in this book are very tense. They, they involve a man running for his life. You would think there would be none of that. But even in The Quiet American, which is, I think, a better executed novel, there are still those periods where you kind of wonder, okay, it's been five pages now. Why are we talking about this? And it never comes back. When I read a section like that in a novel, I instantly think of one thing, and that is alcohol. That is exactly what alcohol produces if the writer uh, has it bad, if the writer is essentially an alcoholic. Then that is, a, that is exactly the kind of thing that will be produced there. And as far as I know, in reading literature written in the English language, I have never encountered anything else that does that. Just alcohol. And... I've yet, and yet, I've never, I've never really seen a biographer really hammer on whether or not Green was an alcoholic. I, I don't know if, if maybe he's an exception to the rule, or maybe people are just being polite, or whatever. Uh, but one way or another, uh, these, of course, the Updike, <laughs> the Updike introduction to Graham Green is fairly good. It's, it's not as good as Robert Stone because Robert John Updike is not as good a writer as Robert Stone, but. It is fairly good, but then again, I've made a case that Updike's nonfiction, especially his appreciations, his prefaces, his introductions, his reviews, tend to be better than his fiction. Not that much could be much worse <laughs> than his fiction. The introductions of both these cases are well worth reading. I'm not so sure about the books. I'm not so sure about the books themselves, and I know that there are lots of Graham Greene fans out there, and I have tried to be one myself. His thrillers strike me as inordinately armchair, just inordinately laconic, in a way that I don't want my thrillers to be. And his Catholic novels, the so-called serious or Catholic novels that he wrote, strike me as the very worst, most swampy kind of Catholicism. That just, just You compare his so-called Catholic novels with the novels of Edwin O'Connor, and, and not, let's leave out The Last Hurrah, which is meant to be sort of a high-mannered comedy. Leave out that and and talk about the others, All in the Family, Edge of Sadness. You look at, at books like that, that do tackle Catholicism, at least in part, and it's just, there's just no comparison. It's like they're not even in the same world. Uh, and I guess I know, I know that, that I guess that probably explains why I have so little of this author. I would love a big collection of his book reviews, but as far as I know, I, I've never seen one. If there's if one exists, I've never I've never seen it. Uh, and like a lot of people, I tried this whole author from stem to stern decades and decades ago when Penguin Classic, when Penguin, the publisher, came out with a whole set of him in mass market with orange spines. Dozens of books. And I read them all. I got all of those in the bookstore, one after another, and I read them all. And maybe it's me. Maybe it's just that this author just doesn't do it for me. 
uh, I know that he does it for lots of other people. He hits a register that a lot of people like. So, uh, once again, <laughs> once again, your penguin recommendation for today is going to be a little bit of a split screen. Uh, I certainly think that this is one of the most beautiful penguin editions that have ever been done. But now I'm starting to wonder if it's if it is if it were a penguin classic deluxe edition, it would say so, right? And it it doesn't. So maybe this is just a highfalutin penguin classic. Uh, this is just a more standard thing. Uh, but the reason I only have these two is because they struck my fancy. And all the other Graham Greene that I have had over time, and I've had plenty, is gone. Because every time I looked at it, I thought, well, he, I, I mean, he's already dead. He can't die again. So I'm never going to have a reason to reread these things for, for a professional. You know, in a professional realm, I'm never going to have to do that. I'm never going to have to revisit this author. Uh, so... <laughs> So I'm glad I have these penguins. I'm glad I have something by this author here. I think if I, in an ideal world, I'm going to have to resist the urge to go online and look around at thrift books or Abe or wherever to find those things. That can I have noticed that is a slippery slope. <laughs> it leads straight down to the poorhouse. So, uh, and you know, it's a pure manufactured want. I've gone all this time without necessarily organically wanting a volume of Graham Green. I think I can go more. Uh, but I don't have any of the others. I don't have I don't have the a burnt out case or the, or uh, or any any of the other the other the, the other volumes here, and I don't really miss them. This is a 20th century author I'd much rather read about than read. Uh, but anyway, those are your penguins for today. I I can't condemn the author because there are long stretches, pages and pages at a time in many of his books that are very effective, that are very well done. Uh, and so that, that's enough for me to think that maybe there's something going on in the parts that I don't think are well done that is nevertheless legitimate and that you might like. So I'm not, I'm not going to condemn this author, as I have occasionally very shyly condemned other authors. Instead, I, I'll just say that I am never driven to go back to these volumes. I just have them. i have never driven to go back to them. I might, if, for instance, Penguin Classics or somebody else were to come out with a big volume of the collected short stories of Graham Greene, it... I'm almost tempted to say that Penguin did do that. Those little orange spine mass markets, I think there were four volumes of the collected short stories. But I think Penguin also did a big volume of his collected short stories. I might even have shown it on this channel. I might have had it at one point or another and had all the best intentions in the world to read some of it. I think, was it one of those olive spine trade paperbacks? Those green spine ones? Well, one way or another, if there were a new, let's say, a new big deluxe edition with it, you know, that was coming in the mail, that I didn't have to go out and buy, and that had a new introduction, maybe, or that was trying to spark a new conversation. I might reread such a thing, but uh, this is not this is not one of those uh, daily penguins where I am raving about the author and can't wait to put his works in your hands. <laughs> this is not one of those. So I'm going to wrap this up for now. Sorry for the lackluster note, although these are of interest to show you, right? Especially this one, which is, I think, just an ordinary black spine penguin classic, but it's certainly an, an ornate thing. Uh, just to show you them, that, that in itself is interesting, and maybe we'll be on to fresher, more invigorating material tomorrow. <laughs> well, I will reconvene then, and we'll see. Thank you, BookTube.